I'm not nervous about teaching Zen Tangle because I believe in it so much and I believe it changes lives and I know it would have changed the lives of some of the people out there and it might only be a little bit I don't mean changing it so suddenly they've got lots of money or, or whatever but just to make them have a sense of worth and achievement um, when you see women who've never drawn or written and they're proudly holding their tile up with their zentangle patterns on it that's that's what it's all about you know just being able to give them something that they didn't have before And then a, a friend, non-Zentangle friend, invited me to an event. It was an afternoon talk in a local village hall not far from me from a woman called Dr. Mita Singh. Um, and my friend, she said, well, would you come along? Because it might interest you. And I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll come along. I'm interested in things like that. And she runs um, an organisation called Dignity of the Girl Child based in Jaipur. I didn't really know what she was going to be talking about. So I went along and spent sort of a couple of hours listening to her presentation about how over the last 12 years she set up a, a non-government organisation that empowers um, and supports um, disadvantaged women and children, of which there are lots. Uh, and over the last 12 years they've increased literacy and changed cultural attitudes um, uh, and supported women, um, victims of domestic violence and things like that. Um, and Afterwards, I was just chatting to her and she asked me what I did. I told her my other job um, and then I said, but I'm also a Zentangle teacher, so what was Zentangled? So I told her and immediately she said, she said, um, would you come out and teach the girls? And I just said, yes. And I, th it was then afterwards that I walked out of this hall and I thought, oh my goodness, how are you going? India, you're going to go to, you've never been to India, how are you going to do this? Um, I knew at that point there were probably, I asked how many girls, she said oh about 40 or 50, so I thought that's okay. Um, so I went away and I thought right I better raise some funds so I set up a good uh, Just Giving page, uh, put it out on the CZT sites, Facebook and Mosaic app um, and I had a huge response and I raised about uh, 1500 pounds which is it's about 1750 dollars um, and with that I was able to fund materials um, I also uh, was contacted by another CZT in Mumbai Sukisha Chandarana and she said she'd come up and join me to help teach so we did so we could sort of team teach um, and in January this gosh it seems so long ago in January this year I flew out to Jaipur and I hit the ground running. I had a huge long flight. If ever you've been to India, you get off the plane and there's just noise and colour and people and vibrancy. Um, and literally the following day, uh, we went to a government school. Um, I knew it was going to be a classroom of kids to teach. Uh, and a government school is, um, it was in the city, right in the city of Jaipur. Um, and these are kids who don't have much at all. So many of them didn't have shoes, even though they're in the city, but there was a buzz and an excitement there. We walked in and we had a classroom that wasn't very big, but we had 72 children aged between six and 14. And then all the way around the outside, there were teachers and social workers because they'd all been invited. They'd been told about Zentangle. So that morning we took the first Zentangle lesson. And when you've got 72 kids, they're all buzzy, 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 chit chat, and they just, you teach them that first tangle and their little heads went yes down and there was just this hush and um, so for three mornings in a row we did uh, we taught these kids and the teachers some of the teachers and the social workers I still keep in contact with in the afternoons we, we, we just didn't have time to stop really we went off to um, we had a driver and he took us to one of the local slum areas um, and so every afternoon for three days we were teaching there and that was with uh, girls girls and, and young women really between the ages of 10 and 20. Um, in, yeah, in the slum area, it was, people often think slum areas are going to be really scruffy. Yes, it was dirt, but the dirt tracks and things, but the kids were brightly dressed, fun, happy, enthusiastic and artistic. And, 
we uh, we didn't have any desks or tables. We were just sitting on a, a stone plinth, basically, um, down on our hands and knees. We had tiles, we'd got some envelopes, and these kids, we had gave them pens and um, pencils, and they just tangled their hearts out. And there was just such, it was just an amazing experience. So from there, after that, that was the first three days, and then um, uh, Sukisha had to go back to Mumbai, and I went, and, and I wasn't travelling on my own, it was with Dr. Meeta Singh, um, and her, her daughter as well. Um, and we went about five hours out of Jaipur, um, uh, into the rural area, and I spent five days out uh, teaching people out in the rural area, so women from the local village who walked about a kilometre from the village to the big house that we were staying in. Uh, and they, those, those women were just amazing because they worked so hard. Um, they're, they're the backbone of the, the family, the backbone of the, the working community even, because it's them that are out in the fields. So I didn't know how many would come, and there were about, about 12 of them. Uh, and the first thing I had to do was teach them how to hold a pen because they were all illiterate. So they didn't, you know, which hand and, and how did they hold it? And so we, we worked on that. They had their little bag with their pens and pencil and tiles in and we tangled. And so I've got pictures and I've got videos of them proudly holding up their first tiles. And the next day I said, well, I'll be here tomorrow. And I didn't know if anybody would turn up. And 11 out of the 12 came back. And, and I couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> that was what was amazing. We drank chai, we were sitting on a, uh, uh, like a veranda, and there was a sort of buzz then, because they knew what it was all about, and they were, they, it was just amazing. So that was five days, uh, and then we went back to Jaipur, and I had a couple of days teaching at a, um, a refuge centre for uh, women victims of domestic violence. So it was a walk-in centre. There's a lot of domestic violence um, within India still. Um, and so these women can walk into this centre, they don't have to have any arrangements, but it's a short stay, so, so they're usually there three or four days, sometimes a week. Um, so I didn't know how many would be there, and there was about ten of them. And the first morning, I just did, I did two mornings. Um, the first morning, I could just see their faces were... Uh, I mean, I've, I've, worked, I've worked with people in other careers um, and who, who've been victims of domestic violence and there was just this blank don't want to trust but they were there because they thought well it was something to do so we tangled and uh, there was even one woman with a, bro a broken right arm from from the domestic violence but she was tangling with her left hand and um, that by the end of the sort of couple of hours they were they were smiling gently and I said I'd be there the next morning and they all came back the next morning but the difference was they were making eye contact with me then and they were interacting with me just because they'd enjoyed it and it was it, it was literally my last day there so I had quite a few supplies left so I put little packages of supplies together and I gave them bags with tiles and some pens and extra we got some envelopes and things and so they 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 went off with those and then one woman came back and she was talking to the superintendent of the of the refuge centre and I asked what, what she's saying and they said um, she wants to know if they can keep what you've given them. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's a gift, I don't want to take it back with me. And she burst into tears because she'd never had a gift, which meant I burst into tears then as well. So then I travelled home and it's I was exhausted but just full of a lot of energy. And I hear from I hear from several of the girls in the slums because they they have phones and they, they are on Facebook and things so they'll message me and they'll send me pictures of what they're doing. Um, another one that I taught was the driver, so the driver who drove us round. He he works for Doctor Singh um, Mukesh, and I'd made him come in to the lessons at the schools and any other ones. And one weekend, the middle weekend, I was there. He went home to his his village. Um, and I gave him some stuff, and when he came back, he showed me all the photos. He'd been teaching, he had everybody in this village sitting down. He was teaching them Zentangle. So it's just, it's that spread of Zentangle and the excitement they got. It was just, it was just an incredible experience. Mm -hmm.